In this video, we'll talk about the cross product. So the cross product is a way to get a vector that's perpendicular to two other vectors. As an example, we'll have a blue vector and a green vector, and we want a vector that's perpendicular to both of these vectors. So for example, this red vector would be perpendicular to both the blue and the green vectors. Now unlike the dot product, this formula in this discussion only applies to 3D vectors. So suppose we start with uh, two vectors here, the green vector and the blue vector. And we want a vector that's orthogonal to each of these at the same time, so it has to be orthogonal to both the blue and the green. Um, well, there's lots of vectors that are orthogonal to both the blue and the green vectors. Here's one. One that's twice as long as this is also orthogonal. So imagine a vector that's twice as long. It's also orthogonal to the blue and green. Here's a bunch more. On the other side, and as far as you want to go in that direction as well. So actually there's an infinite number of vectors uh, all on the same line that are orthogonal to the blue and the green vectors together. So which one do we want to call the cross product of the blue and the green vectors? Well, let's narrow it down. Let's say that the length of the red vector, the cross product vector, is equal to the area of the parallelogram formed by uh, the blue and the green vectors. So if the blue vector and the green vector look like this, then we can form the parallelogram from them, calculate the area, and we'll say the, the cross product vector is the vec it has to have the same length as the area of that parallelogram. All right, so we have a parallelogram by the blue and the green vector. It has a certain length. Let's say its length is this long. But that's still not enough to tell us exactly which vector the cross product vector is. Uh, this vector is per perpendicular to both the blue and the green vectors, and it has the right length. And this vector is also perpendicular to the blue and green vectors, and it also has the right length. So we need one more way to distinguish uh, the vector we'll call the cross product vector, and we'll use a right hand rule. If we're taking the cross product of the blue vector with the green vector, so the notation will write something like this. Here's the blue vector, here's the green vector. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll take our right hand and we'll put it along the blue vector and we'll curl our fingers in the direction of the second vector, the green vector in this case, and look at where our right thumb is pointing. That direction is the direction we'll take for the cross product. So this red vector will be the cross product of the blue and the green vectors. Notice that if we did it the other way, if we wrote the green vector first, x, the green vector, then the x sign, and then the blue vector, we would take our right hand, put it along the green vector, curl our fingers in the direction of the blue vector, and look where our right thumb was pointing. And that would tell us that if we took the green vector across the blue vector, we would get the red vector here, the vector perpendicular in this direction, with the length that's equal to the area of this parallelogram. All right, so how do we actually compute this vector? I'll come down closer to the paper here. We want it. Let's do an example with uh, numbers. So let's say that our first vector is the vector 1, 2, 3, and our second vector is the vector 2, 3, negative 1. Remember again that the cross product, uh, this formula only works for vectors in three dimensions uh, with three components. So what we want to compute is u cross v. So an easy way to do this is to set up a 3 by 3 table, a 3 by 3 matrix. The first row will be i, j, and k, always. We talked about these a little bit before. The i, j, and k are the vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. They're the vectors that point in the uh, direction of the axes in three dimensions. And then we'll put our first vector here, 1, 2, and 3, and the components of the second vector here, 2, 3, and negative 1. And then what we're going to do is calculate 
uh, and we're going to go across the top row, the i, j, k here, and for each of these entries, if we're going to start with the i entry, we're going to cross out the row and the column corresponding to the i, and that leaves us with four numbers left. We're going to multiply these numbers in a peculiar pattern, 2 times negative 1, and then we're going to subtract 3 times 3. So, and then I'll multiply that quantity by i. So i, the vector i, 2 times negative 1, 2 times negative 1, minus these two numbers multiplied together, minus 3 times 3 times i. And then I'm going to do the same thing for j. I'm going to cross out the row and column containing j. And that gives me these four numbers. And I'm going to do the same pattern. 1 times negative 1. 1 times negative 1 minus 2 times 3. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the k vector. Cross out the row and column containing k. That leaves me these four numbers here. And then I uh, do my pattern. 1 times 3 minus 2 times 2. And then I need, I'm going to uh, add these. I'm going to add the i vector, subtract the j vector, and add in the part with the k vector. And so the result is, let's do this computation, uh, negative 2 minus 9, so that's negative 11 i. And inside here we have negative 1 uh, minus 6, so negative 7. And then the negative sign out there gives me plus, plus 7j. And then here we have 3 minus 4, so minus 1. Okay. Uh, we mentioned this notation before as well. Uh, the i just tells you what goes in the x direction, the j tells you what goes in the uh, y direction, the k tells you what goes in the z direction. Uh, so really this is a shorthand notation, or a different notation for the vector negative 11 in the x direction, 7 in the y direction, and negative 1 in the uh, z direction. So this vector is the cross product of u and v of this vector crossed with this vector. And we can check to make sure that uh, at least the orthogonality holds. Uh, the claim is that negative 11, 7, negative 1 is perpendicular to both u and v at the same time. So u is 1, 2, 3. Let's start it with this result. Negative 11, 7, negative 1. And what do we get? We get negative 11. 2 times 7 is 14. And 3 times negative 1 is minus 3. So that is indeed 0. Uh, I'll point out uh, a common mistake is to forget this negative sign. When you're doing the middle component, the component that's uh, in the y direction, make sure you do your pattern 1 times negative 1 minus 2 times 3, and then you subtract that whole result. Uh, that's it. That gives us a vector that is perpendicular to both u and v. This concludes the uh, screencast introducing the cross product.